At some stage in your life, you're going to need a reset. In my last video, I talked about my set and reset framework, what to do if your ladder is against the wrong wall and how to approach different seasons of life in different ways. So it's good to know the theory, but from personal experience, reset sucks, at least a lot of the time. I remember one big reset when I was in my 30s and I had two kids, they were young, I was building a house and I was juggling just way too many things at the same time. And I think partly I was juggling because I kept saying yes to things because I, I was in reset and I didn't know what I really wanted to do. So I'd been a physiotherapist for a decade, I'd become a manager and then uh, I was running lots of different services and it was a safe and secure job, I was paid well, uh, there were plenty of opportunities for further promotions but I found myself just doing more and more admin. I was on email more, I was dealing with more problems, with more complaints and I didn't really like the job. I didn't want to go back to being a clinical physio and yet I just didn't get excited about my future and I knew I needed to change. In a different area of my life, I was the chair of my church board and one of our leaders left and they needed someone to fill the gap and so I was doing some paid work for my church part-time. And then I had this side hustle which is now called Space Makers and I was getting interested about how we work. I spent a lot of time looking at email management and trying to help people make space in their inbox and we ran a course called Email Ninja which is about how to get your inbox to zero each day and it was just taking off and we were getting more and more people interested even though I just had no time to train people. So I was juggling all these things, wrestling with what do I need to focus on and how do I make decisions in a period of reset. Because it was super tough. On the one hand I had a really well paid job that I was familiar in but I felt like my time was coming to an end. I had this side hustle which really didn't pay money but I was excited about it and work was starting to come in and I was working in my church which I needed to do and it was important but again didn't pay very well and I, was, I felt quite confused and lost and because I couldn't make a decision I just kept juggling and I ended up suffering. I started to have breathing difficulties and so I remember that I would stand up in front of my staff and I would be speaking and I would be breathless. I just feel like I couldn't catch my breath. And then eventually I was breathless when I was at the dinner table and then I was breathless just reading picture books to my young kids at night. And I'm like, something's seriously wrong. And it, it worried me. I went to the doctor and I had lung function tests and had blood tests. And thankfully there was nothing wrong with my body. Uh, when he heard about my life that I was juggling three jobs, he said it's anxiety and it's stress. I must admit I didn't recognize it as anxiety, but it was. And my body was saying, reset. <laughs> it's time to make space and slow down and actually work out how you're gonna use your time. Just such a valuable thing. Uh, I had another friend at the time who had led a big organization and a few months before he'd become so breathless with anxiety that he ended up going to hospital. And he's actually never worked at the same capacity again. And I could see the writing on the wall for myself and I just had to change the way in which I lived and worked. And so I did the stuff that I've described in Reset. I took some time off work, I slowed down, I went for long walks, I started to journal and write ideas down. I got a coach and started to look at my strengths and personality types. I had a chat with a friend, a coffee, and we brainstormed all the skills that I had and tried to look outside of the ladder to look at different possibilities that were there and things that I might be able to consider. And most importantly, I started to pay attention to my gut, to what was happening around me, to try to detect what I was meant to say no to and where I was to put my focus. Because Viktor Frankl, who wrote Man's Search for Meaning, says that we detect our life's purpose rather than kind of invent it. And I very much believe that there's a calling or a purpose in our lives, but it's about listening. And that needs space. And uh, there were two aha moments that transformed my decision. One was I was talking to my allied health manager and she was an amazing person. And she said to me, look, Daniel, I can see that your heart isn't in this like it used to be, uh, but we wanna keep you. You know, how about I offer you one day a week as a physiotherapist? You can do whatever you want, we'll pay you well. And she said, that way you'll be safe and secure if business and church doesn't work out. And it was such a lovely offer. And I should have been so thankful for it and yet I remember feeling in my gut just super angry. I felt like yelling at her. 
And I'm like, what's going on? And I saw, I, I reflected on that at the beach the next day. And I realized that actually, if I took this job, it would be so perfect that I would never not be a physio. And it was like the golden handshake or the, or the golden cage where if I took the job, I just wouldn't be brave enough to live out the life I was meant to live. Uh, and I knew at that moment, the only reason I was still a physio is because I was scared of taking the jump. I wanted the safety and the security, but I knew I wasn't meant to be there anymore. And so I made a decision at that moment to resign as a physio and to give up that, that job. About a week later, I had a beer with a mate who was a successful consultant in business, similar to what I wanted to do next. And I said, oh, hey, Pete, I've made the decision. I'm gonna go all in, I'm gonna quit my day job, and I'm gonna become like a productivity guy full time. And I thought he'd be so excited. And he looked me in the eye and he said, that would be the dumbest thing you could do. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it hurt, it hurt. But it was so true. Uh, and that was another aha moment for me because what Pete was saying was that you're gonna be broke if you don't earn some money. I had a mortgage, I had two kids, and actually business doesn't suddenly appear out of nowhere. And, and so armed with these two pieces of information, on the one hand, it was time to leave. On the other hand, I needed to be wise and thoughtful about what it looked like to start a business. Uh, I ended up taking casual work as a physiotherapist. I got some paid work with my church. I reduced some expenses in my personal life and reduced my expectation about what we could afford each day. And then I was in set because I knew I had to make a business work. I had goals, I had projects, I had tasks, I had to network, I had to create new content. I had to get out there and actually make a living out of this thing called Space Makers, which is now what I do and which is what I love. Everyone's story is different. And yet the principles of slowing down and taking time to detect what comes next, I think is relevant for all of us, particularly in a period of reset. And I want that for you. I want you to be able to have enough space to think about what comes next and to listen and recognize those aha moments as they come your way. So practically, if you're in a period of reset and you know that something has to change, what can you learn from my story? And I think there are some key principles. Firstly, I would say you need to make space. You need to withdraw and slow down and make time to sit in the unknowing, not to be so frantic in your business and so frantic in trying to fix that uncomfortable feeling that you can't detect what's really meant to come next. So make space. So the second point is don't do this alone. Find people you trust, who you can process ideas with, who can help you talk about the things that you're wrestling with and therefore help you detect what comes next. So the third point is to be patient because it's hard to slow down and to be actively inactive, to actually take the time out to, to not grab the next thing but to also actively pursue what comes next. This is such an important step that I wanted to create another video about how to be actively inactive. Basically how to actively do nothing in order to achieve something. Most of us don't know how to do this. We don't know how to be still and present in an active way, in a way that helps us to detect those aha moments that actually guide our path. So I'm really excited about this video and I'd really like you to look at it. I talk about action bias and the research behind action bias. So why we're so active in doing stuff and then also how to actually slow down and truly achieve what you need to achieve by doing less, not more. So if you want to make space by doing less, not more, then I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to discover why soccer goal is almost always jump and why we habitually do stuff when it's smarter to do nothing in order to achieve something, then I'd love you to click the next video. And until next time, make space.